Okay, so this lecture we're going to talk about sex-linked traits. And when we talk about sex-linked traits, we're talking about traits on the X chromosome. So remember in humans, males are XY, females are XX. Okay. And you pass on these chromosomes with your other 22 to your offspring. Okay, so, sorry. This is just to show you the difference between the X and Y chromosomes. So the X chromosome is about three times the size of the Y chromosome and contains thousands of genes. The Y chromosome is most important for determining male body parts. So all humans have at least one X chromosome. And males have XY and females have XX. So when you are working with X-linked or sex-linked traits, we are going to write out X and Y chromosomes and we're going to write the alleles on the X chromosome. So it looks like this. So females have two X's. Therefore, females have two alleles for X-linked traits. Males have only one chromosome, um, X chromosome. So males only have one allele for X-linked traits. And so the way we write them, we still do dominant recessive. So say N is normal and say little n, uh, um, one X-linked trait we talk about is red-green color blindness. Whoops. Okay. We could show that this female, X, big N, X, big N, so she's homozygous for the normal allele. And the dad here is X little n y. So in fact, he would be colorblind. Because colorblind is recessive, and he only has the recessive trait. So what you notice in males is that X-linked traits, recessive traits, show up more often in males than females because males only have one copy of the gene. So they only have one allele. So they can't be heterozygous. To do Punnett squares <coughs> with X-linked traits, you do the same thing. Just like if this was big A, big A, right? You'd split it into gametes. And so with XN, XN, the mom is down here, right? We split those chromosomes into gametes. Now, you know that I'm lazy, so I wouldn't even do this part, but you can. It gives you the same ratio. And then when you split the male gametes, you have XN and you have Y. So what I want you to notice is that you've got to write these chromosomes in your gametes because you have to know if the offspring are girls or boys. And now it depends on what the parent genotypes are can affect the children differently. So if you see in this example, the dad's colorblind and the mom's normal. And they have normal girls and normal boys. In this example, mom is normal, but a carrier, right? She's heterozygous. And dad is normal. 
So when you do the Punnett square, and I really suggest you take a few minutes to work these out yourself, you'll see that you have normal daughter, a normal eyesight son, a normal daughter, though she's heterozygous, and you know, we prefer to write our alleles like that. And now you have a colorblind son. Okay, you didn't have any colorblind sons um, over here. And remember that the dad gives the Y allele to the sons. Okay, that's all he gives to the sons. He gives his X to the daughters and the Y to the sons. So if you look at a kind of a combination of this, so we have a normal mom that's heterozygous and a colorblind dad. So phenotypically, they're the same, right? Normal, colorblind, normal, normal, colorblind. But genotypically, they're different. Ooh. I don't know what's going on. And that gives different offspring. So here we had no children with color blindness. Now half of our children, half the girls and half the boys, are color blind. The other half, one is a carrier, and this boy has normal vision. So you get different combinations depending upon the genetics of the mom and the dad. And that's different than autosomes, which we've been working with, where it doesn't really matter which parent has which because they're both contributing to alleles. It's different for sex linked. So let's do a practice problem. So go ahead, read this, pause, and then we'll figure it out. So the question says you're doing color blindness, X-linked trait, recessive. So I'm going to say, again, N is normal vision, little n is color blind. What's the phenotypic ratios from a normal father? So dad has to be X, big N, Y, because he's normal. And a carrier mom. So she is X big N, X little n. What's the phenotypic ratios of the children? So let's do a little mini Punnett square here. The dad's gametes and the mom's gametes and the children And do you see why we have to make sure we keep the X and Y chromosomes? So that we know boys and girls, because that's part of their phenotype now. So we have girl, normal, right? We have boy, normal. We have another girl, normal. And we have a boy colorblind. So you have to keep the information about the sex. So you have two normal females, one normal male, one colorblind male. The reason this is not correct is because with X linked traits, sex linked traits, we keep track of males and females. Okay, red green color blindness is X linked recessive. What's the probability that a normal father and a carrier mother would have a daughter with color blindness? So pause, work this out. Okay, so this is the same cross as above, and now we're saying a daughter with color blindness. And what that tells me is now I'm only looking at the daughters, okay? So, only look at 
daughters. So when we look at the daughters from this cross, we're only looking here and we see that both of them are normal, one of them is a carrier. So let's go back to what the question asked. What's the chance of having a daughter with color blindness? Well, the answer is zero because all daughters have normal vision. Okay, so that's a key with genetics is if it, if with X-linked, is if it asks for a daughter, don't even look at the boys. Okay, so you have pl practice problems for this. Um, just so you know, these are some examples of sex-linked traits. Um, we usually use hemophilia and color blindness in the problems, but I will always tell you it's an X-linked trait. Okay, so sex-linked or X-linked traits only on the X chromosome write out X and Y and you put the alleles on X as a superscript right and then just do normal gametes and Punnett square Okay. All right, so practice, practice, practice. The last topic I want to talk to you about <coughs> is how we study humans. Because we've talked about, you know, you mate this pig with this pig, or you mate these guinea pigs, or you mate these Mendelians. Well, we can't really force people to mate with who we want to look at their genetics. So one of the ways we study genetics in humans is called a pedigree. So you can kind of think of it like a family tree with genetics. So a couple of things you want to remember when you're looking at these is squares are males, circles are females. If the square or circle is covered, colored in, that means that person is affected. So it has the trait you are studying. Okay. So it could mean you're affected with blonde hair or brown hair or blue eyes. So it doesn't mean something bad, it just means you have whatever trait we're looking at. You express, I should say that. Right? So these people could be, if it's a dominant trait, homozygous dominant or heterozygous. When you see a line, it means mating. <clears throat> and when you see these lines going down, it means the offspring, the children. So let's look at an example. So here's an example of following the inheritance of a widow's peak. And a widow's peak is when you have that kind of downward hairline okay, versus no widow's peak you just have a smooth forehead up there. Okay. So the affected means has widow's peak. Right? So it's not something bad, you just have what we're looking at. And so this is showing you that grandpa had it and grandma over here had it and dad and mom and this daughter has it. Okay? This daughter doesn't. So what we want to ask is how is this trait inherited? Okay? Is it dominant or is it recessive? And the rule you're going to use is if it's dominant Okay. Every affected 
child will have at least one affected parent. Because if it's a dominant trait, you got to get it from somewhere. Right? You've got to get it from one of your parents. Okay. If, on the other hand, it's a recessive trait, a recessive trait, what you look for is an affected child with two unaffected parents, right? Which means the parents were both carriers. They didn't show the recessive trait, but it popped up because they each passed on a recessive trait. So take a look at this, geno uh, this pedigree and see if you can determine how the widow's peak is inherited. And if we look down here, we find that it was dominant. And the way you do that with my rule is I always go up the pedigree. So I say, okay, this kid had it. Yep, one of their parents had it, at least. This kid had it. Yep, she had an affected parent. These two kids had it. Yep, they had an affected parent. And so the other thing you can do is you can go through and start filling out everybody's genotypes when you want to practice doing that. <clears throat> what about the attached earlobe? So go look at your ears in the mirror and see if the bottom of your earlobe is right next to your neck or you got a little bit of hanging down. Okay. Take a look at this pedigree and try to figure out how <coughs> attached earlobes, this is our affected trait, is inherited. So you pause, you come back, and again start from the bottom and go up. And I say, okay, this girl has it. Ha ha. She does not have affected parents. This is recessive, right? These parents must both be carriers to all of a sudden have it show up. So even though this girl has it and has an affected parent, as soon as you find this just even one time in the pedigree, you know it is a recessive trait. And here it shows all of that information filled out. So again, take some time to look at these. Let's go through two problems, and then you are done with your genetics. Okay. So is the following trait inherited in a dominant or recessive manner? So take a minute to look. And again, I start at the bottom and I say, okay, we got, I've got four affected kids. Oh, they both have affected parents. Let me look a little further. All right, I got two affected kids. Hey, they both have unaffected parents. That tells me this trait is inherited in a recessive manner. Let's look at one more example. Right, you do the same thing, you look from the bottom up and I say, okay, I got a whole bunch of kids here, yep, and they have, if I'm following the lines, an affected parent, okay? I have a whole bunch of kids here, follow the line, they have an affected parent. Now. Granted, I don't know what her parents look like, but based on this pedigree, based on the information I've given you, this must be a dominant trait. That's all there is to pedigrees. Don't make it harder. You just have to understand if it's dominant or recessive. All right, so you've got lots of practice. You've got extra credit homework eight that you can come to class on Monday and get help with. You've got genetics practice problems. You can bring those to class on Monday and get help. So make sure you're in class Monday, getting your genetics questions answered. Um, Wednesday, our last official day of class, we'll do a little bit of review for the final. All right, good luck. Email me if you have questions.